Hello, I'm Ben Walton, veterinary orthopaedic surgeon at Chestergate Animal Referral Hospital. This is my introduction to detecting and assessing lameness in dogs. If you are a vet, or perhaps an experienced dog owner or dog handler watching this presentation, you may well feel very confident in spotting and assessing lameness already. But if you're not so confident, you're in good company. At least two scientific papers have demonstrated poor agreement between subjective assessment of gait and an objective measure of lameness using a force platform. And this was when experienced orthopaedic clinicians were involved. But interestingly, in both of these studies, one of the observers did better than the others at matching the force platform results. It must be possible to be good or bad at assessing lameness. It is also easy to improve your skills in this regard simply by knowing what to look for. During my time as a lecturer at the University of Liverpool, I sent out a questionnaire to six of my colleagues in the orthopaedic department asking them to list the things that they look for when assessing lameness. For detecting thoracic limb or forelimb lameness, it was unanimous that the head nodding up or down when the dog is walking or trotting is the most useful marker for lameness. For the hind limb, however, it was a different story. There was no mutual agreement on any single marker. What is more, there was a long list of things that people said they looked for. This little experiment confirmed my own experience, that assessing forelimb lameness is relatively easy once you know how to interpret a head nod, but that assessing hind limb lameness can be more challenging. In this introductory presentation, I will concentrate on gait adaptations that occur in response to a painful limb. These adaptations are common to many causes of lameness. To illustrate these adaptations, I have made some assumptions. One is that pain is exacerbated in an area when force is transferred through it. Therefore, in an attempt to minimize pain, dogs adapt their gait to minimize force. Some of you may remember Newton's second law which is force equals mass multiplied by acceleration. So to reduce the force that is transferred through a limb, a dog may aim to reduce the deceleration of the limb as it hits the ground, or its acceleration when it pushes off. Or it may reduce the mass, or the proportion of its body weight that is distributed to the painful limb. There are two ways to reduce the deceleration and acceleration of the limb. One is to reduce the overall speed that the dog is moving at. This is intuitive. Lame dogs move more slowly than sound dogs. The other way is to reduce the speed of the limb itself as it makes contact with the floor. And if a dog wishes to reduce the mass going through the leg, it must redistribute its body weight to the other healthier legs. This stick diagram represents the skeleton of the dog. To the left is the neck and the green circle represents the head. A dog's head is a heavy thing, projecting forward as it does, it brings a dog's centre of gravity forward to a point just behind its elbow. In a standing dog, approximately 60% of its body weight is supported by the front limbs, and 40% by the hind limbs. In terms of weight distribution, the head is a weight at the end of a lever, the lever being the neck. A dog has a lot of leeway in lifting their head which has the effect of shifting their weight backwards towards the hind limbs and offloading the front limbs. Lowering the head shifts the weight forward and can offload the pelvic limbs, but there is less capacity for this. To those of you new to assessing canine lameness, it is important to remember that when you are watching a dog with a head nod because of forelimb lameness, that the head nods up as the lame limb strikes the ground, as the dog is shifting weight backwards. The head nods down when the sound leg strikes the ground. Try and get into the rhythm of the dog's gait by saying up each time the head nods up. Once in the rhythm, it should be easy to identify which leg is hitting the ground as this happens. Watch this video and see if you can spot which leg the dog is lame on. I'll play it once more. The dog is lame on the right forelimb. The head nods down towards the ground when the left forelimb strikes. This means the left is the sound leg. 
This is often misinterpreted by dog owners who are not used to looking for lameness. Let's look at reducing limb speed. Imagine that this diagram represents a piece of rope with a rubber ball at either end. On the right there is a wall and gauge illustrating the force of impact against the wall. If we throw the right hand ball against the wall it hits it with full force. But if we simultaneously throw the right hand ball towards the wall and the left hand ball away from it the forces cancel themselves out and the ball hits the wall with less force. Now turn that diagram around 90 degrees and we have a diagrammatic representation of the hind limb of a dog with the top ball representing the hip, the top bend representing the stifle or the knee, the bottom bend representing the hock and the bottom ball representing the foot. If a dog could throw their pelvis upwards as the foot travels towards the ground it could reduce the force transferred through the leg. Watch this high speed video of a dog with hind limb lameness and see if you can spot which leg she is lame on. It is clear to see that her pelvis is thrown vertically as the foot of the right pelvic limb approaches the floor. We can also see that the entire time she is holding her head extended forward and low in an attempt to shift her weight forward off her hind limbs. As well as limiting the magnitude of pain that is experienced by minimizing the force going through a lame leg, dogs may also attempt to limit the amount of time a sore leg is on the ground. I find it more useful to watch limbs as they move through the air in the so-called swing phase. While the lame leg is weight bearing, the sound leg will be in swing phase. If a dog is limiting stance time on the lame leg, it must move the sound leg through swing phase more quickly than the lame leg. Watch this high speed video of a Newfoundland with left hind limb lameness. The right leg swings through the air more quickly than the left leg does because she is attempting to offload the sore left leg as quickly as possible. This has been a brief introduction to subjective gait analysis. I have covered the mechanical basis for three common gait adaptations, the head nod for thoracic limb lameness, the pelvic lift for pelvic limb lameness, and reduced stance time for all types of lameness. The content comes from a more exhaustive presentation that also covers other common gait adaptations, condition-specific adaptations, and adaptations associated with multiple limb lameness. It also includes an introduction to some aspects of objective gait analysis and some guidance on going beyond detecting lameness and beginning to grade its severity. That was my introduction to assessing lameness in dogs. Chester Gates Animal Referral Hospital is based in Cheshire with an easy access of the M56 and the A55. The orthopaedic department consists of myself, Professor John Innes and Francois Saulnier. You can find out more by visiting our website the address is at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the presentation. I hope that you found it useful.